Bronson Reed and Dexter Loomis and Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart versus The Way. Poor Shotzi out here working just a couple of days after her dad passed away. That sucks. That's very sad. First half of this is all comedy, and Johnny and Candace in particular are great, and their timing is tremendous in the comedy stuff, so it was all, all sorts of fun. And Indy... I wrote Indy and Dexter are flirting. What really happened was Indy was flirting with Dexter, and Dexter was standing there and being Dexter Loomis. But they're always kept apart. So... Story after the break, there's of course Dexter was winning when we when we went to commercial. When we come back, the first thing he does is make a hot tag. He tags out. I don't know what happened in the middle. It may, it makes me angry watching it now. So there's a big parade of high spots and all the women wipe out all the men with dives. And eventually it comes down to Dexter Loomis has his choke on Johnny Gargano in the ring. Indy jumps in to save from behind, but she throws in the brakes and takes a bump instead. And Loomis hears this bump, he releases the choke, sees Indy down, goes to check on her, but then she, he is booted from behind by Austin Theory. And Indy's very, very upset because Austin has cock-blocked her. And I looked this up to see if there's actually a female term, female equivalent for this term, but essentially there's still a cock there, still being blocked. So it's just, it's still there. But I also saw one suggestion of Beaver Dam. She was Beaver Dam. That also works. Anyway, Indy is mad at Austin, throws him out of the ring. I think in wrestling parlance, it would be an inverted cock block. That's fair. Thank That's you. fair. Yeah. So she tries it again, takes another bump, and this time it works. And Loomis cradles her in his arms like the creature from the Black Lagoon and carries her away. And Indy, at the very last second as they disappear at the stage, she lifts her head, smiles, and winks. The most personality she has ever shown. You ever watched uh, an action movie or... I don't know, a drama or something. And like Both. Yes. There's a very there's a very intense scene going on and you're really into it. And then there's that fucking character that has to say something silly. Sure, yes. And you're like, fuck that guy. Why do we have to have this dumb shit? Why do you have to have Jar Jar Binks in this fucking movie? That's what I felt like watching this match. You got Bronson Reed and Amber and Shotzi and they're 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 all in there trying to have a really good match, but then shit is happening in the match. Like fucking Loomis puts the choke on, and then what's her face? Indy goes over and she plays dead. So he lets go of the choke to make sure she's not dead. I'm like, he's a fucking serial killer. Why would he give a fuck? Unless this is a really creepy storyline. I'm just watching this and I'm thinking what the fuck? Like, what? It's your big chance on Tuesday! Hey, AEW fans, look what we got over on this channel. You never watched our show? Well, now's your big chance. We're going to give an eight-person intergender match where the men cannot touch the women, but the women can beat up the men. We're going to have a comedy, like some fucking moron on our board. God bless the guy, but he's an idiot. He was like, Brian doesn't like the romance storyline in this match, but he's fine with the burgeoning romance between Chris Statlander and Orange Cassidy. I'm like, you can't be this dumb. Like, you can't be this dumb. Chris Statlander and Orange Cassidy, literally, the extent of their relationship is they're nervous around each other after the match. That's it! In what universe is that similar to Shotzi playing dead in the middle of a wrestling match? The creep from the creep farm breaking his hold. He was about to beat the North American champion and he let go because there was a body dead behind him. And she smiles and winks and we're supposed to go, ha 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 ha. I'm like, brother, come on. That's your fucking main event. It wasn't even the top of the first hour. That was your main event of the show. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. So eventually Theory is left alone in the ring and all his partners are slammed on him and then all the women do dives on him and Bronson dives on him with a splash and pins him. I thought it was goofy fun. Bronson's in there working his ass off. Yes. And there's fucking comedy going on and bodies being carried away by the fucking creep from the Black Lagoon. But once they left, at least then they got serious again after that. Vinny, it was lighthearted frivolity, okay? I like lighthearted frivolity. 
I don't do lighthearted frivolity in the main event of the first fucking unopposed show on Tuesday when you're trying to steal the audience from the other show. Why? So Bronson wins and then celebrates with both women on his shoulders, carrying them around like Andre the Giant. And there you go. That was NXT. Brother, granted it was a takeover on free TV last week, but NXT was virtually even with last week with no competition. Virtually even. The other show almost doubled. Do you know what I'm saying? This is your fucking chance. Don't put on a, a show that is there with a bunch of light-hearted frivolity. Try to capture those fans. If you're a big fan not. of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.